Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with my shooting buddy, Jim Finlay. We've been having a lot of fun lately with subcompact pistols, our carry weapons, making sure we're trained up, using different loads, comparing and contrasting. And you just got a new carry weapon, right? Yes, I did. I picked up a Glock 43, 9mm. Mm -hmm. uh, first time I've gone with a little uh, single stack, but uh, carries really, really well. Uh, very reliable, of course, it's a Glock, so that goes without saying, mm -hmm. and um, seems to be very accurate as well. So, been having a lot of fun uh, learning how to how to make the thing function the way I like to have it function, and uh, lear learning the ins and outs of the gun. And I'm using my trusty Caltech PF9, which I've had for wow, probably close to 10 years now. I want to say uh, might have been 2009, I think, when I bought it, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Uh, I bought it because of the form factor and it was quite affordable. It was about $250 I want to say when I bought it. And I've looked at a lot of other options. I've been real tempted by a lot of other options. But it's really for me about the form factor. It's just a little bit thinner and just a little bit smaller than the alternatives that I've looked at. And I did a little bit of a fluff and buff when I first got it, which is kind of common with kel -Tec. You kind of take off some of the burrs, polish the feed ramp, that kind of thing. But, uh, but it's been it's been really reliable. Now, since then, I've tried the Smith & Smith Wesson Shield, mm -hmm. and I really liked it. It's a way better shooting gun than what I have, uh, even comparing nine to nine. Right. Uh, and I've tried your 43, definitely a, a great shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm tempted to upgrade, but, but it does keep coming back down to, uh, you know, the form factor. Now on mine, I have, I'm carrying it right now, so I've got uh, a, custom holster that I made for inside the waistband. It just goes right under the uh, the belt, loops back on itself and snaps. It's uh, it's nice and compact and it's a protected trigger. Now I do also pocket carry, front pocket carry with no pocket holster because it's a long and long and heavy pull, about nine pounds. Yeah. <clears throat> now you were carrying a G26, is that I right? I was, uh, yeah, correct. I was carrying a 26 uh, and I carry 24-7 and um, it gets a little bit in the way with the thickness of it and my uh, work and whatnot. So I decided I'd give the uh, the 43 single stacker a try and uh, and go down from 15 rounds in the gun to uh, to eight rounds in the gun. So so far so good. Uh, carries really really nice. The G43 does, and uh, I think I think I'll end up getting Gavin into some uh, <laughs> black guns here shortly. Hey, I have Glocks. I love Glocks, you know, for a lot of the same reasons that you do. So why don't we do a little bit of shooting? Let's shoot our own and then let's trade. Okay. And then uh, let's do a little bit of a debrief because we're both loading okay. what we're shooting, which yep. is, is good. I, uh, there's people that go back and forth on that from a legal perspective. It's not something, you know, that I worry about. You know, make sure you study up on the legality of using your own loaded ammo when you carry. I like to shoot my carry weapon a lot, mm -hmm. make sure it functions really really well and that can get really expensive of course yeah. now and i tend to actually uh to, to clarify i tend to carry factory ammunition uh, but i practice with the factory ammunition and then a lot of reloaded ammunition that i load myself on my 1050. Mm -hmm. another one of those blue things yes <laughs> drinking the blue kool-aid <laughs> yes all right so should we get to shooting absolutely let's all do right it. let's do it all right so we're at the combat distance as it were of 21 feet yep and you're going to you're going to shoot from pocket carry. I'll shoot from my uh, inside the waistband holster okay. carry. And I think what we're going to do on this one here is we're going to uh, we're going to know that there's a threat, so we're going to be okay. real ready. So that for me, that means my hand is on my pistol. Okay. Um, and so when the buzzer sounds, I'm going to have basically I'm going to have probably a second faster time than than when I go into the pocket and find the gun and come out. Yep. Okay. So we're going to so this time we know there's a threat. We're not sure what the threat is yet or whether we need to stop it, but just in case. I'm ready to go. Sounds good. All right. Line's hot. Two sixty-six. Okay. A little bit low on the target there, but they're both on it. Let's uh, let's see how I do now. So you know a threat's on its way, and okay. Is the shooter ready? Shooter's ready. Stand by. Two sixty-two. Okay. Got me by four hundredths of a second. <laughs> Shall we go see if we got any paper? Yep, let's do it. <laughs> so let's see what we got. Okay. 
So these are all the, all the shots that I've fired. Pretty much staying on paper, which is not bad, with the exception of one that I stuck over here into, into Gavin's target. Goes back to training and practice. The more practice you can get, the better. The more training, the better. Yeah, I noticed with the PF9, I'm, I'm to the right and I'm high as well, so I definitely need to do more practicing. Mm -hmm. So now to trade. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I think we, uh, because we're using firearms that we're not familiar with, I think we should start at the low ready. What do you think of that? Sure, yeah. Okay. So uh, that one's chambered up hot. Okay. It's got a mag full. And I'm assuming we got the same going on here, correct? Yep. Okay. So we're going to do the buzzer thing again, and I'll shoot for that center one again. Okay. All right, line's hot. <laughs> wow, those were practically touching. <laughs> <laughs> that trigger takes a lot to get used to. It does. Yep. yep. And then the reset on it is is a you got. I was waiting all day for it to reset. So used to the Glock, you know. Yeah. Resets pretty quick, and this yep. you got to run it all the way back out. Yep. So, so how that many took seconds? me uh, three fifty six. Three fifty six. Pretty much okay. all day. Want to switch? Yeah, let's switch places here. Okay, no. so so low ready, you're saying. Yeah, so basically about like so. Okay. You just come up, sights on, and I and it's gonna be kind of funny because that, the the grip angle is so weird between these two. I couldn't find the front sight. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure it's got a front sight, so I was hunting yep. around. Oh, there it is. Okay, shooter ready. Yep, shoes ready. Stand by. I'm Good job. Two sixty eight. Yeah. Get them nice and centered up. Are, are you a pistol salesman? Are you trying to get me into a Glock 43 here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. I've shot pistols for 30 <laughs> years, and the Glock's just the way to go. Let's, uh, let's show our viewers the targets. How about okay, that? Okay, let's go ahead and clear these, and then... Uh... Yeah, I have to say, I don't know if I've ever seen a kel PF9 shoot a group that tight, <laughs> <laughs> even though it was only two shots. Yep. Basically touching. Yeah, the uh, the trigger pull is is uh, so different than the Glock. I was surprised they even hit the board, much less the paper. Yeah. And then the reset on the trigger is you've got to run your finger all the way back out and get a reset on it. Um, so first, I had to find the sight picture because I'm so used to the to the grip angle on the Glocks. Yep. And then so that took that took what seemed like five seconds was a long period of time. And then on the reset, it took me a while to get that pistol to reset. So. My times suck bad. <laughs> um, my group's good, but a little bit low and right. Yep. Now, how? Let's take a look at my group. I'm actually pretty happy with that because we're centered up fairly well. Yep. You actually mm. shooting. You're shooting the Glock better than your own carry pistol. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So mm. uh, why don't we do a, a quick uh, debrief on the loads and whatnot? Okay. Um, I think practice is the is the key. Uh, as you can probably see, I'm not real fast getting them out of the pocket. Um, but uh, yeah, I, have it, I have it with me, and that's gonna, the biggest thing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what I like about the kel is, you know, when I need, I, I do front pocket carry this with no pocket holster because of the nine pound, really, really long trigger. I like to have the option to have something that's, something that I can carry at any time. You know, if I'm out in the woods, I'll carry my Glock 20, or if I'm, you know, at all concerned about grizzly or larger animals, the 44 Magnum. But those are so big and so heavy that they're just not practical to concealed carry. Correct. So it's better to have something to work with that might be lower capacity and then carry an extra mag like what you're yes. saying. And and truly, in my in my mindset, is it's a truly defensive firearm only. And if I'm back to that corner where that's the last resort, at least I have something. Yeah. Um, you know, th that's another thing of being aware of your surroundings. Don't go down dark alleys at night. You know, situational like that. awareness. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 so this is this is just the, the last resort. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, hopefully you never need it, but just like yep. seat belts, you wear them. Well, I'll I'll have to admit I really do like I do like the overall package with the Glock 43. To have almost the same form factor as my Keltec PF9 with what I believe would be better reliability and definitely better accuracy being able to, to get on target you know mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm convinced on it I also like the shield so I'm gonna have to do a little bit more 
research and have a little bit more fun. These <coughs> these subcompacts are just a lot of fun. They're yeah. they're, they're a different beast. It's yeah. kind of fun <coughs> because they're they're not really intended for for you know high volume shooting, but. You know. uh, well, and that, there again, and that, you brought up another point that I that I always tell my students, and that is practice, practice, practice. Well, yeah. um, my mindset is that that Glock, you can shoot it a lot. You can shoot it as much mm -hmm. as you want. You're not going to wear it out. Now, whether that kel would withstand a thousand rounds a year. It's not meant for it. In yeah. fact, I think the lifetime is somewhere between a thousand and two thousand rounds is what they would say. Right. Uh, from Caltech, it's kind of more of a, a as-needed type of, of a weapon, yeah. which which makes another good case for the Glock 43. Right, and, and the fact that, you know you, pra you know then you practice, and I've I've got I'm getting close to 100 rounds through the gun, so it's really new to me. <clears throat> I'm off no malfunctions of any kind, but uh, in another month's time, it's going to have full over 500 rounds through it because I'm going to practice with yep. it a lot. And then that way it just gets you know, second nature. Um, as you can see, I was fumbling getting out of the pocket. Yeah. And then that's just, you know, practice and trying to go fast. Yeah. So so if you want to carry, uh, what I would suggest would be try different carry weapons. You know, go to, go to the range with your friend. You know, get, get people's impressions on what works and what doesn't. Try different chamberings, you know. Try 380, try 9, try 40, see, see what you think. Get, get the weapon, get your concealed pistol license, get training and then practice. And of course, yep. you know, I'm all about reloading and reloading enables you to practice a whole bunch. Even if you carry factory ammo, you can duplicate factory ammo, yes. you know, with your reloads. And one, one thing I'll throw in there on that as well. So I, I practice with my reloads and then every so often I'll run what I'm carrying through mm -hmm. the gun just to make sure. Yeah. Make sure that it's accurate, make sure it functions. And, and so I like to cycle the, even though it's factory ammunition, a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth the, the yep. cost. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jim, for joining me. I think we yeah, got a lot more fun to have. Uh, would love to hear what you're carrying and why you're carrying it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any of the action on Ultimate Reloader, please subscribe to my channel. Until then, happy shooting and happy reloading.